Faust, I just want you to um, grab their hand as you give today. And then if you're giving, also you can come up um, the buckets here. But we just value giving together and making it a point to say, Lord, thank you. And together as a family, maybe your spouse isn't here, or maybe you're single or whatever, but over your house, over your children, that we take a moment to honor God with him being faithful. How many of you, he's been faithful to you this week? He's been faithful. Well, this is a great moment to thank the Lord for his faithfulness. Father, we worship you. We thank you. We bring. It's an honor. Just say that. It's an honor to bring, to bring my gifts, to bring my supply, to bring you my tithe. It's an honor, Lord, and we say thank you. This is just a, a moment to reflect on your faithfulness to us this week. You've been so good, and we know because you've been good, you'll be good tomorrow. You'll be good next week. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and goodness. We just call this congregation, each and every family and marriage, blessed in Jesus' name, lacking for no good thing. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can go ahead and give. Good morning, good morning. Time to rise and shine. Good morning, good morning. All right. Um, hey, I'm Pastor Nate. Well, great, great to have you this morning. I'm going to be sitting on a chair most of this morning, uh, that, which is very unusual for me um, because usually I'm up and I'm maybe animated and a little uh, passionate. And, uh, but I really believe there's some things in my heart uh, that I want, to, uh, I want to get across and I want to, I want to deposit all of them because I think that they're life-changing. And uh, we're going to be baptizing uh, people this morning. I'm so excited about that. And I really believe that, um, that w even what we're about to do uh, is a picture of what I'm, uh, my heart is to communicate uh, this morning. And, um, and that is the reality, um, the reality of a, real of a reality that we do not see. And um, as a matter of fact, I want to read to you uh, uh, out of Ephesians. I didn't give you this verse. Ephesians 2, 4 through 6. It says, but because of his great love, this being God's love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you've been saved, and God has raised us up and seated us with him in heavenly realms. All right. So we, we quote these things a lot of times about how we've been seated in Christ. And we, when you, when the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, when, when you get born again, the old is gone and, and uh, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus, that there's a, there's a reality or a re, uh, rebirth of your, help me out. What's reborn when you get born again? Your spirit. And so this is a, a, a lot of times our mindset is we say spirit uh, but and it's a theological, it's a, it's a mental ascent, but it's not a reality to us. In other words, the the reality that I am a spirit, you are a spirit, you you have a soul, and you live in a body. Uh, but but and just as you're a spirit, listen, and you're raised uh, up to sit in heavenly realms. In other words, there's a place of authority that you now sit in. In this realm is a reality. And, 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 and so anyway, I'm, before I uh, get off and keep talking here, uh, I want to just give you the title of this morning's message. Uh, and it's a title, but it's, it's more of a prayer. Um, and it's not even just my prayer, but it's a prayer that I want us to pray before we get into the word this morning. And it's this, open our eyes. 
Open our eyes. And you could write that down, but I would ask you to say that with me because this is what we're, we're going to be talking about this morning. And, and what you hear is not just dependent upon what I say, but what your heart is open to hear. The Bible says that he that has ears to hear, let him hear. So you could say, and you could say with me, we could say together, open our eyes. This is what I want you to pray with me this morning as we come to the Lord. Uh, just that simple prayer. Just go ahead and close your eyes. And Father, this morning, we just simply ask you together to open our eyes. Father, open our eyes this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So if you, um, <clears throat> 1 John chapter 4 uh, is where we're going to be starting, and I'm going to be giving a lot of scriptures. They're going to be all up on the screens. Uh, you can follow along there. Uh, I encourage you to take notes, or you can always come back and, and do a little recap and watch again. So 1 John chapter 4, we've been talking a lot in uh, 1 John chapter 4, all about how the Bible tells us to believe not every spirit, Okay. 1 John 4, 1 says, believe not every spirit, but test the spirits, right? And so we've been talking about that um, and, and how it's interesting, even the words that we read, sometimes we read over them, but we don't realize the reality that there is a spirit, okay? Uh, that there, there are spirits or there are words, there are things breathing on you is what we've been talking about. That word spirit translated pneuma or, or is pneuma in the Greek, which is translated breath or, or, or that which gives life, uh, unless it says God in front of it, it's not necessarily spirit of God. It's, it's the words or the breath, okay? Anyway, we see that. It says, do not believe every spirit. And so just this, just what we've been talking about is the reality of, of what you don't see, but you are influenced by. There are things that I do not see, but I am influenced by. And so that's really my prayer this morning is that we would uh, ha have a reality uh, of another thing that I cannot see, the reality of another realm. Verse 4 says this in 1 John chapter 4, it says, you little children are of God and have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he who's in the world. So who is in you, the Bible tells, goes on to tell us uh, later on in, in, in that chapter that there's a spirit in us, and it's the spirit of God. So there is one on the inside of you if you've received Christ, and that is a reality. Whether you know it or not, there's one on the inside of you, and the Bible tells us that spirit bears witness with our spirit, and it's, one that it's the one that teaches us and shows us what to come. It's the one that we, we don't know how to, how, uh, how to pray as we are. He gives us discernment or gives us the words, or you, you understand what, I, what I'm saying. There's just, this is a reality. We read it, but Father, open our eyes this morning to see it as you say it. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We quote that. You maybe have heard that, Philippians 4, 13. It's on shoes and, and so on and so forth. But there is a reality that, that it's through Christ. That there is, there, is, there, is, uh, there is one, okay, that I don't see, but is very much a reality that gives me strength to overcome everything. Because what I face in this world and what I wrestle against is not just each other. You could say it this way. Um, uh, so there is a war going on about you, but there is also a war going on over you. In other words, in, in a place that would be in another realm, in the heavenlies. Okay, let's keep on going here. So. Uh, second, uh, second Timothy 1 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Um, I, I would love to. Um I would love to jump back for a moment uh, talking about uh, this spirit. He tells us that he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And we, re we just re read in 1 John 4, it says um, that you've overcome the spirit that's in the world because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And the spirit that's in the world, is what that would be anti-Christ, Okay. Antichrist, and you could translate uh, the word Christ as it is translated, which is anointing, 
or uh, uh, that, that which would be upon you or given to you, and that would be opposing that which has been given to you or, or that which lives in you. There is a spirit that is opposing uh, that which has been given, uh, that, that has been given to you or lives on the inside of you, okay? And it's actually opposing you, but greater is he that's in you than that which is opposing you. Okay, and that, that which is opposing you is a spirit, okay, and it's not just a spirit, but it is, the, a, uh, it is spirit, and it has a commander, just as Christ is the prince or the commander of peace, Satan is the commander of anti-Christ. And that would be, and so all of what you, if you, if you uh, have, uh, if you didn't know, uh, a third of the angels, the Bible tells us, fell uh, when they, they sided with uh, Lucifer, uh, and so that is who Satan commands, okay? But greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, and you can do all things through Christ or the, who empowers you. And the spirit that he gave you is not a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. But there is a spirit of fear, and that is anti-Christ. The spirit of anti, uh, anti-Christ. I want you to see this. Um, uh, I, I love this. Uh, let me just go to 1 John 4, verse 18. Um, and if you have your own, in your own time, you can read 15 on to 18, and it talks about the, 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 if you've been born again, that there is God who abides in you, and who abides in you is the spirit of love, right? And, and so this love that dwells in you, verse 18 says, there is no fear in love. So when fear is present, okay, um, uh, uh, um, you know that God is not speaking. And the Bible tells us, we just read in 1 John 4, 4, that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And he tells us that, uh, that, that there is one in us that's greater. But when I am listening to fear, that which overcomes me has gotten, that word is the word I'm listening to. I, let me see, how do I say this? Um, oftentimes we respond from uh, not from the Spirit of God, but this, a spirit that would say, I'm going to overcome you. And when I respond to a spirit that's saying, I'm going to overcome you, and I respond, and, and, I'm, and, I, and I'm playing into the hand of a spirit, uh, the spirit of Antichrist, that which is not, has, does not have a good plan for me. But when I, so there is a war going on, and a lot of times the enemy wants to get you and me to respond in fear, Instead of, as what God says would be, you could call that faith, or out of love. Understanding how much God loves me, and that he has a plan for me, and that he's given me his word, he's given me his spirit to overcome, to bring the direction, whatever it might be, he's given that to me. All right. So where there is fear, there is no trust. Where there is fear, there is no trust. There's no certainty of God's love. There's no certainty of God's for you and that God's causing all things to work together for good for those who, who are loved and called according to his purpose. Wow, where there is fear, there, there is no trust. And when there, where there's no trust, then guess who, has, guess who has to take it upon themselves? When you can't trust God, now you're taking it upon yourself. And when, I, when, 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 when my strength is in myself, uh, I'm defeated as I stand. Sometimes we, we don't give, uh, we don't give de- de- the devil the credit that he does deserve as far as his strength. You fighting the enemy, the devil, okay, Satan and demons, you fighting him without Christ is like you taking on a battleship with rubber band gun. It ain't happening. But greater is he that's in you. Okay, and that's Christ, the anointed one, the one that every knee has to bow. See, Satan understands authority. The heavenly realms, they understand authority. Okay, and let's keep on going here. So, um, again, where there is fear, there is no trust. The words that we will be um, overcome have gotten in us. I wonder how many times where we're responding right now uh, to things because we're afraid that we're going to be overcome. Instead of holding to what God has said. 
and therefore playing in the very hand of the enemy. Now, am I saying there's not, there's things that we're, am I not, am I saying that we shouldn't be doing something? No, I'm saying, I don't know what I'm saying right there. (laughs) There are things that we're supposed to be doing, but they must be directed from him. And I must understand what spirit is directing my actions. Because when I hook up with Christ, I'm hooking up with the anointing. When I'm hooked up with a different spirit, that which is one of distrust, it's anti-anointing or anti-empowerment to break yokes. You can try all you want and wrestle with one another, but our wrestle isn't here. And so there is a way and there is a direction for the church right now in this day and age. And I would say this, God, open our eyes to recognize that which uh, needs authority taken over it. Because there is, there is a cause and effect. And for us to uh, address first heaven solution, first heaven, this world, not second heaven, not third heaven. Paul said, I knew a man once who was caught up to the third heaven. That would be where you're seated in Christ in heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 6 talked about how the, the spiritual realms where he says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of weakness in the heavenly sphere. So there's, there would be layers And Lord, open our eyes to see that, but to address this level, okay, when when the cause is a second level, right, because the, the third level is moving right now, the Bible says in the last days he will pour out his spirit. Let me tell you, we're in the last days, so there's a third heaven move that's causing a a warring because of the time it is in the second heaven and causing all kinds of problems, So if I go back to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, where he says, you who he raised up to sit together in Christ in heavenly places, I'll understand if we say, God, open our eyes that because I'm seated in heavenly places, I don't pray from earth to heaven. I pray from heaven to earth. And I need to be right now in this day and age, if I'm going to be doing anything, and if I'm going to be any earthly good, I need to be heavenly minded, and I need to pray from heaven with authority that is in Christ, okay? And I need to pray to, and take authority in the, in the second realm, if you will, over principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, right? And, and, and that would cause about a change or a shift in this, this first heaven or on earth. Let's keep going here. Now, this is the Bible I'm teaching, and sometimes we, we hear, and, and this is baptism, and you might be here just to watch your little kid get, or your grandbaby get, get but I, I, I'm a, I believe the Lord is wanting to awaken us, awaken his church to the reality that you and I, we are in the army of the Lord. That there is a war going on, and guess what? God chose you as a soldier, or God chose you for this time, for this place, and he, and he, both Satan and God, would like to have your voice on the earth today, because it moves things. All right? So... We, we're talking about fear and how when where there's fear, there's no trust. And, and the words that will, will be overcome have got, that we would be overcome have gotten in us. And, and when fear is present, there's something that happens to us. If I was to scare you uh, coming around a corner at night when you, let's say you, you didn't know I was in your house, right? And you came in, the garage door opens and, and pastor's in your house. He shouldn't be there. And I go, ah, you are either going to run or you are going to start swinging, and it's going to be really dangerous. And that is, the, that is the move when we respond to fear. We as the church, we run silent, and we leave our post. Or we start swinging, and everyone, even though I'm your friend, we're getting hurt. And we don't realize really who we're fighting. Okay? So, and, and so, uh, anyway, okay, let's, let's keep on going here. So the church wasn't sent, we talk about this, uh, to, wasn't sent to be right, 
but to be redemptive. In this day and age, when I'm trying to, when, when my, my whole goal is to be right instead of uh, be redemptive and be, uh, be what would bring a heaven solution. That's what it means to be redemptive. A heaven solution. And that's what we're going to look at a few examples here. How a heaven solution brought uh, an earth, uh, heaven's, he- heaven answer brought an earthly solution. Or a solution to earth. All right, let's keep on going here. Uh, Psalms 37a. Um, he tells us this. that He says, to refrain from anger and turn from wrath, do not fear. Because it only leads to evil. Fear is Again, you being puppeted by the enemy. It leads somewhere. Fear does lead somewhere. And you could say, well, I'm just afraid, you know, like I just, that's just one of my things. That's just, well, you can agree to that or you can agree with what the word says. It's so subtle, but I, you got to understand that there is, Father, open our eyes, that there is a war going on. Listen, not just for you or, or around you, but above you. Okay? All right. Ephesians 6, 12, I want you to see this in the word. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world, and against spiritual uh, forces of evil in heavenly realms. So the evil is fighting against you, okay? And we, we just saw that the result is, of fear is evil. So you can see how intertwined that they are. Okay, in the heavenly realms, you're wrestling, and 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 I love that that passage there. It, it really speaks of ranks. There is rankings. It speaks of military right here. It's not just like demons and demons and demons and demons. It's like first class, second class, right? It's like lieutenant. It's it, 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 it's rankings. Okay, uh, and and you'll you'll see that in the word how there are actually demonic uh, what would be like captains or or generals that are placed over cities, and so in, in in a sense you would be a city would be a habitation of people, but you know that there's also the same way that, that would be not as a high not as high of a ranking demon okay but over families. But you know that he's also given his angels charge over you? So that there's also uh, angels over your families. You have angels that work for you. So here's what I'm explaining to you. Not only do you have angels, but you have the very word of God and all of heaven responds to the word. This is what the Bible teaches. Father, open our eyes. To the reality that we actually are living in. The reality that we're actually living in. James 3.16 tells us this, For where envy and strife or rivalry is, there is confusion and every evil work. Listen, when you and I engage in strife and discord and rivalry, what we are doing is we are opening the door to the, let me say it this way, another dimension the reality of a third, and giving them free place to work. Because I'm responding to their suggestion. When I take the suggestion and I should begin to uh, strive with one another. Let me, let me uh, I, I'm not sticking with my order of my notes. Let me jump all the way down uh, here to, um, uh, let's see here. All the way to the end <laughs> here, uh, the very end. And... Let's go here. Ephesians chapter 4, 26 through 27. Be angry, he says, and sin not. So you can be angry and sin not. And he says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath because this gives place to the devil. What? This opens the door to the devil? My anger with you? My wrath? My, my, my wrath? You know what wrath? How, here's how you get wrath, filled with wrath. You begin to count all that they're not. This is wrath. This is what gives place to the evil one, the devil. You think he's working right now in this world, making you angry with a friend? They go to my church. Can you believe? No, 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 no. Making us angry with one another. 
Listen, it's not about you and you, but it is about you. He's got to get with you because authority has been given to you. So it takes your agreement with what he says to give him the authority to move here on this earth. Being critical. You know, if I, I would say, I would really, um, really, really uh, maybe give this uh, thought. The more political you become, oftentimes the more critical you become. It's okay to be stand for policy and stand for truth. But if we're going to stand for something, let's stand with the party of heaven and what the kingdom of heaven says, and let's bring kingdom laws here more than we are a party. Let's keep on sticking here because we're, we're, we're not quite done yet here. All right, here we go. So... Um, I mean, I'm trying to really hold to my notes here. All right. Um, if he, mm, okay, so, you know, we, this is one of the prayers that we are praying. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. We, we, this is the title of this morning's message. Uh, pray that the eyes of our heart would be enlightened. Even what we're talking about today, this is not mental ascent. It's the reality of, what, uh, of a truth that you believe. What I'm explaining to you and what I'm showing you in the Word, and you're going to see even more here, is not mental ascent. This is the truth of God's word that you hear in your heart and you say, no, this is right. This is what I know. How do you know? Because your heart knows things that your head doesn't. Your heart knows things and God, this is how he speaks. The reality and God's heart for you is that you would walk in light, not darkness. Yeah. And that's why the enemy comes to blind the eyes. Okay, let's keep on going. Matthew chapter 16, 17 through 19. You remember, it says, uh, Jesus answered and said, uh, Jesus answered, uh, this is when Jesus said, who do you say that I am? Jesus asked the disciples. It hadn't been revealed yet. He hasn't said, hey, I'm the Messiah. But here's what happens is, uh, Jesus answered, said to, to Peter, he said, because Peter said, you're Christ. And Jesus said, blessed are you for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. Again, the reality of another realm. The reality of another realm. And you know what? This happens all the time, and we don't, we don't, uh, we don't recognize it. And part of, part, part of us operating in the level of authority is us recognizing that other realm. Because when I speak, my words go forth, and I can't see them. But they do have power, and they do have impact, and they do carry authority. And, 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 and not only do my words carry authority, but that realm also carries words. And this is what we were talking about in 1 John chapter 4. What spirit are you listening to? And here we see the spirit of God that revealed to Peter that Christ, Jesus Christ, was the Messiah. And let's keep on going here. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not overpower. I love that. The gates of hell that would, that it would be this. If you were to just take that out, the lower region. God's building his church. The lower region cannot overcome where he's doing and what he's building. And I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm seeing people moving already and, and I'm running short on time. But here's the thing. Check it. You have, give me your phone. Pull up Kara's message. We'll keep on going here. 2 Corinthians 12, 2. I know a man, or I already used that one. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. All right. Matthew 28, 18. Again, this is, these are scriptures that you got to see that um, we're not just pulling out of midair. Yeah. It's, it's not just Christian talk. That's right. That's Listen, Christian talk that you don't understand and the people of the world don't understand is because the, the way that we operate so often is only on a level that what we see. But there is, just like what pa Pastor Evan was saying this morning, aren't you thankful you have people praying for you? And, and she prayed, I plead in the blood. When we see the, the blood of Jesus and we see uh, a great, a great uh, type and shadow in Passover and how when the blood was applied, the spirit of death couldn't enter that home. But everywhere else that the blood was not applied, a spirit okay, brought death here. 
Listen, the blood brought life. The blood protects. The blood is your authority. And Jesus came in Matthew 28, 18, and he said, all authority in heaven and on earth. He's drawn our attention to the reality of another realm right here. In heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. So there are things that he said that often we don't know about that we still need to be operating by, and it takes us coming into understanding or our eyes being opened so that we can exercise authority and not be subject to that which is would like to rule in this world. Satan never had the right to rule until Adam gave him the right. He would like to rule, but Jesus came, and when he died on the cross, the Bible says that he went and he took back the keys, he took back authority, making an open display and spectacle over Satan when he triumphed over him through the cross. So what he, Satan wants to rule again, and the only way he can rule is not just, when I wish Adam would have never done that. I mean, I, I, come on, Adam and Eve, I wish they would have done You are doing the same thing every day. We're doing the same thing every day because we don't recognize the snake in the garden or the spirit that's talking to us is talking to us to get his plan on the earth. And if I start talking and agreeing with what he says, this is why it's so important to test the spirits. And any spirit that speaks and does not carry with it the connotation of what would be what God says is love, okay? I'm not saying to be soft. I'm not saying to, be, uh, to, to not be able to stand for truth. Jesus was love, and he threw some tables over in the temple. Jesus was love, and he told someone the truth and said, you brood of vipers. But we got to be playing at the right hand. Matthew chapter 8, 8 through 9. The centurion, I, and I'm setting it up to these three passages that I'm going to close with. Matthew 8 and 9. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. But he said, speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. And God commends the centurion for his faith. In other words, uh, how many of you know the Bible says that faith comes when you hear and you hear the word of God? So he was hearing something. He was aware of something because he made it a man. Listen, I am a man under authority, he said in verse 9, having soldiers under me. He was aware that this man doesn't just have authority. He's got soldiers that he can just say the word and things happen. Like he's, he's, been, he's been hearing like this realm move, but not seeing him go there. Like he's speaking words and, and things are happening. And he's like, how in the world is this happening? He said, just speak the words. And guess what happened? Soldiers were sent. The same way that the centurion. Listen, when you speak the word of God, soldiers are sent. And I just don't want to be one of those that talk in the Bible all the time. Really? Well, then you can have hell on earth. You can have hell in your family. Well, I just don't want to be saying that at the doctor's office, saying what God says. They'll think I'm some kind of nut. Do you hear what you're saying? Do you recognize the spirit that's speaking to you? There is authority in your words. Listen to what it says, because you've got to see this in the word for yourself. This is why I'm, I'm taking time to go line upon line. This is why I'm not rushing through. We're going to baptize people. Still, it's Sunday morning, and La Fiesta will still be there. But you know what could change? Your eyes. My eyes. The reality of what I see. Father, open my eyes. Open our eyes today to be aware to be aware how we operate. Look at this. Psalms 103. Uh, Psalms 103, verse 20. Praise the Lord, you, his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Wow. 
Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. So, so when they obey his word. So when Jesus said something, soldiers were sent. Well, all authority we just read that he said, I give it to you. Now you go and you bring about this here on this earth. Bring some soldiers here. Listen, I'm in the Lord's army. What is man, the Bible says to the the angels ask, what is man, what is man that you're so mindful of him? That you would make him a little lower than God or a little lower than Elohim. What, What is man? So there is a ranking in the heavenlies. We sing this, wonderful counselor. I mean, they already have Christmas stuff out at Sam's Club. Almighty God, the everlasting Father, the what? The Prince of Peace. That you would make man a little lower than the prince of peace. In other words, that we would be the body of Christ. The prince of peace, that, that's a commander. This is, these are, these are, these are, he is the commander of peace. And so guess what? In heaven, this right here, I wanted to read this. We shared a video the other, uh, a few weeks back, and, and uh, this is... Um, Kara Johnson, she sent this to Pastor Evan, and it just was, made me so excited. She got the book from the, uh, the gentleman that talked about um, being with Jesus, going to heaven, dying. He, he died. He was uh, dead, dead on the table, and, uh, and he came back. And you could tell he'd been with Jesus, just the, the joy. And, the, and he describes what he saw in heaven. And let me read it. Everything is right. This is out of his book. He says, Jesus, in the title in this chapter is, Jesus wants all people saved. Everything is right. You're connected with everything and everything's connected with you. What was Jesus doing when I got there? So this is this man that went to heaven. He, he said something I would have never thought. He was strategizing. He was strategizing. He was communicating to these beings in front of him, which stood in a half circle facing him. He was strategizing to get more people on this earth to know him as Lord and Savior. God is using everything that he can, short of evil, to get people to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. He's looking for people on earth to work with him. When I work with him, I'm also working with angels in the heavenly. Because they're seated underneath of me. What is man that you're mindful of me? You placed him right underneath the, the, what would be the prince of peace, the commander, the one that's strategizing. When he says go, they go. When he says come, they come. That's you. That's me. We're seated. All right, so he's five star. You're two star. Great. You got some underneath of you. And when you pray the word, things happen. When you speak the word, He's looking for people on earth to work with him and getting people to know who he is. I came to understand how much we are at war and he is urging all of mankind to press into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. There's a, there's a thought for you. You know in heaven you don't have a vote but you do have a choice to stay or leave. The way that heaven works is what God says. A just, loving God is the, he controls that atmosphere. That's how we're supposed to be operating here on earth. Well, I just don't think this. It doesn't matter if that's what you think. This is what he says. Well, I just don't like this part of the Bible. Well, you know, that was back then. I mean, let's get with the times. No, you get with his word. Because if you're not getting with his word, you're coming under a different word whose agenda is to steal, kill, and destroy you and your family. And that's the truth. So do you always feel like doing his word? No. This is what he says. But humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Guess what? There's a grace there to, to equip you to make that choice and to move forward. I want you to see Hebrews 1.14, are not, not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Acts 12, uh, 5 through 17, and we're not going to read it all, but we're going to talk about how uh, in verse 5, he says, Peter was kept in prison. There was an attack on the church, and Peter got put in jail, but it wasn't over because the church was praying. I said, because the church was praying. 
if my people who are called by my name, if my church, if the land that needs healing take, is going to take prayer, we got to move the third heaven. We need to move from here to, to war here and change here. God will heal the land. If I'm not praying, I need to stop saying. If I'm not praying, I need to stop just saying. Even just to say, well, I'm just saying, you just devalued your words. You just devalued and you didn't, you no longer are looking at what you're saying as being a vital part to what we exist here. Just saying. Just saying. Maybe start praying. The church fervently prayed. Verse 7 says, suddenly. You know what a suddenly is? Like right now, suddenly, through that wall, a Mack truck could drive through. Suddenly. Like everything's cool. We're just normally in church Sunday morning, about to baptize people. Everything's cool. And all of a sudden, boom. Like there was no sign that it was about to happen. What What was the response to the suddenly? Prayer. Or what was the cause of the suddenly? prayer. So you're telling me it can look like hell on earth right now? And bam! Bam! There I am. All right. All right. All right never mind. <laughs> Cheaper by the dozen. All right. Awesome. Because you're all right. Prayer. Suddenly there was a shake and Paul and Peter was released and he ran to the house where the church was staying and the girl answers the door and sees Peter and she, she goes, oh, it's Peter. She slams the door and runs back and nobody believes him. But they say it must be his angel. There was an awareness of another realm. There's an awareness of another realm. I'm, 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 I'm wrapping up with these last two, two, two pieces. 2 Kings 16 or 6, 16. What's going on here? is um, the king of Israel and the king of uh, uh, Aram or um, Amalekites or I can't remember which, which I don't want to take time to go there but there's a king uh, the king of Israel is being warred against by another kingdom okay and the king of Israel they're, they're not as strong but somehow they keep on overcoming because they have inside information And this information is coming from the man of God, Elisha. Let me tell you, as a child of God, you have some inside information. And so what's going on is the king goes, how is it that they know what's going on? And the word comes to him. There's a man of God that hears and is telling the king of Israel words from your bedroom. Though he's not there, the spirit that's in there is coming and bringing to him what's there. The reality of another realm. God, open our eyes. And so what happened is that king said, go get Elisha. Because we're going to stop this. And so what happened is that that king sent at night armies to surround the city where Elisha was. Elisha was. And when, when, when morning came, uh, Elisha's servant awoke and he saw all, the chi- all these chariots and horses and he was afraid. But Elisha wasn't afraid. No, he wasn't afraid because, in verse 16, he says, don't be afraid. Listen, I'm talking to servants of God right now. I'm talking to the church. Don't be afraid. What's going on? Don't be afraid. Don't be making moves out of fear. Don't be afraid with, with your finances. Don't be afraid with, for your children. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Open our eyes. The prophet answered, those who, don't be afraid. The prophet answered, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And who's us and them? It's not Democrats, Republicans. It's not church in the world. Wow. It's not church in the world? Like us and them? No. Look at Next verse. Elisha prayed, open his eyes. Open his eyes so that they may see that the Lord opened the servant's eyes. This is what we're praying this morning. Opened his servant's eyes. And he looked and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. He saw the kingdom of heaven who was with 
them. And you're saying, wait, wait, who was with them against them? No, I want you to just finish this story because maybe you've heard that part of the story, but this is the next part of the story that often doesn't get told. I'm going to read it so it goes fast here. As the enemy came down toward uh, toward him, Elijah prayed, Lord, strike this army with blindness. So he struck them with blindness as Elisha had asked. Whoa, here on earth, the reality of what you see in heaven, open our eyes. His words caused a move here on earth. And so as the, the armies that came to attack Elisha, he prayed, God moved. I said, he prayed, God moved. How about we prayed, God moved. And as the enemy came down, he, uh, verse 19, he said, Elijah told them, um, he struck them with blindness. Elijah told them, hey, you guys, this is not the city. This is not the road that you're supposed to be on. Um, follow me, and I'm going to lead you to where Elisha's at. So Elisha leads him, leads this entire army, taking him at his word, to Samaria. After they entered the city, Elijah said, Lord, open the eyes of these men so they can see. Then the Lord opened their eyes and they looked, and there they were inside Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, so basically he brought them to the place where the king of Israel could just have them. When when they opened their eyes, they saw where they were at, and they were like, oh, stink. (laughs) We're in trouble. And here's what the king of Israel says. Should we kill him? I think we should kill him. No, that wasn't the wisdom that was from above. Listen to the wisdom that was from above. Elisha said in verse 22, don't kill him. Don't kill them. Would you kill those you have captured with your own sword and your bow? Instead, set food and water before them so that they may eat and drink and then go back to their master. Feed them. Give them something to eat and drink. And then send them home. Are you crazy? Is that cray cray? So he prepared a great feast for them. And after they had finished eating and drinking, he sent them away and they returned to their master. Look at the result. So the bands from Aram stopped raiding Israel's territory. Woo! There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end leads into just more devastation. But there's a wisdom from above. You know what we can be doing is asking for wisdom. I love the king's move. He asked the man of God, was this what I'm supposed to do? He said, no. He said, feed him. It's amazing. It's amazing when you see all the the, the, the times. And I, oh, I, I would love to tell you the story of Daniel when, when Daniel prayed and when, uh, and, and, and immediately the Bible says an angel was sent at the, at the, at your words, but I was upheld by the prince of Persia. In other words, one, and so then God sent a warring angel to release me, to get to you. Sometimes it's the delay that causes us, uh, to stop or, or to grow weary in doing what we've heard and what God said to do. The delay I'm going to end with this last piece because it's important for us to see a few times. Joshua 5, 13. This is Joshua. This is, he's about to go. He's the one that took, this is before any battles have taken place besides the battle within himself. And he's standing in the steed of Moses, the greatest leader that he'd ever known and the people had ever known who did signs, wonders, and miracles that were just amazing. And here he is, and he's about to go in to take the promised land, about to go into Jericho, and they're all ready for war. And what happens is, is it came to pass when Joshua, verse 13, Joshua 5, 13, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes. So he's on his way to do something his way, in his strength. He's on his way to go take the city of Jericho, which is huge, has big walls, and really kind of looks ominous, looks impossible. Is anything too hard for the Lord? There's nothing too hard for the Lord. Are there walls and are there barriers? Are there all kinds of things right now in this world? Absolutely, there are. 
And so it says as he came to, came to pass that Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and look and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn. And Joshua went to him and said, are you for us or, for, or are you against, or are you for our adversaries? Again, this realm. Joshua, man of God, on this realm. Is it possible for the church of God to be engaged on this realm? Yep. You know what he says? The, he says neither. Look at the next verse. He said, uh, no. <laughs> Need, like, no. <laughs> nope. I'm not for them. I'm not for you. He says, I'm a commander. I'm the commander. You're going to take your cues from me. Move on. Take off your shoes. Check this out. Listen to what he says. No, but as a commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped him and said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? He says, here's the first thing. You're not going to walk the way you did walk. And, 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 you know, you've heard this statement. Don't judge an Indian until you walk a mile in his mock. You're not going to walk. The, the advancement and the promise what I've given to you is not going to be found in your past experiences. The way you went before, you're not going to find victory that way. That's why I love this whole corona thing. Really? Yeah, because who are you going to ask that's dealt with this before? Who are you going to, who are you going to call? What do you do here? I'm a pastor. Hey, yeah, I got this church in Alma, and, you know, I'm kind of young, and, and I just wanted to call you Billy Graham, which is not here anymore, but <laughs> it wouldn't matter if he was because he hadn't dealt with it. Like, there's, there, there's none of these that has walked this road before. So he says, take off the shoes, for the place in which you're standing is holy ground. And I've got all this to get to this one last point right here today, and that is that he tells them in verse 2 of chapter 16 or 6, he tells them how it's going to work, how you're going to take the promise. Listen, then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, next one, next one, there. Then, and then the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given you Jericho into your hand. Isn't that what God said he would do for our nation? Isn't that what he said? He, there's so many promises, and here's this commander reminding of promise. He said, I'm giving you this land. I've given it to you in your hand. It doesn't look like it. It's got walls all around it. Into your hand and the mighty men of valor. All right, okay. In other words, all the men that are in there and the, the thing. Next verse. I want you to see this. You shall march around the city, all the men of war, all you men of war, you shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. Next verse. And, and this is the, this is the direction. This is, and seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. What I, without going further into the, the, the story, here was the direction. All of you march around the city, but first, before and behind the ark, I want you to send priests, seven of them, and I want seven of them to carry with them a trumpet. And the trumpet is not a trumpet of war, it's a trumpet of a ram's horn. The trumpet of a ram's horn was the horn that was blown for the year of Jubilee. The year of Jubilee is what Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel, to set the captive free, to, to uh, preach recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free, to say, this is the year of the Lord. He said, there is a, what you're going to do is going to be something that I'm going to do. What you're going to do is you're going to you're going to blow these horns that you would only blow on the year of the Jubilee. And the year of the Jubilee is the 50th year where it set all men free. There's a way, it was a shout of praise. The priest would do this. The priest, who's the priest? You're cho the Bible says in first, I think it's Peter. It says you're a chosen na nation or royal priesthood. Thank you set here to show forth the praises. Here's what I'm saying. 
I want to I read uh, uh, something about the Jubilee really fast, and this is it. Oh, thank you, Lord. It was observed after the manner of the, um, the se- Sabbatic year, I either should not be sowing or reaping or pruning. So this is in the year of Jubilee. There was a forgiveness of all past sins, and I, I think that this is the key for the priest right now is to walk in this forgiveness, the releasing of debts, the releasing of debts. Yeah, it is, this, is what, this, is, this is what God came to do, to release debts. As long as I'm holding a debt over somebody, I'm holding and I'm, I'm in that place of authority or judge, but I'm, I'm, I'm underneath of somebody else's whisper, and that is Antichrist. And I'm giving him the right to keep people blind. Look at this. The year of Jubilee not only set men free, but it was a time where you didn't sow and you didn't reap, but instead you lived off what the fields and the vineyards produced of themselves. Your trust was not in your own hand. Your trust was in what God had set in the land. Instead of you and I trusting in what we can only do and working and plowing and and all of this and holding that against them and and we got a plan and we got a plan. No, we're going to shout to the Lord. We're going to let our voice be heard in the heavenlies. We're going to pray to heaven from or to earth from heaven and we're going to see God move Instead of us trying to muddy things up. Now, I'm not saying you don't do something. You do whatever he tells you to do. But this is where it starts. And if I'm moving down here and I haven't moved here first, let me tell you, what I'm going to be is frustrated. What I'm going to produce is bitterness. What I'm going to produce is anger. What I'm going to produce is more and more strife. What I'm going to release is more and more of Satan's evil works. Guys, it's time that the church pray. It's time that we open our eyes and that even what we, we're, we're going to baptize people today, that what we're, we're literally saying, I'm de- 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 Christ has come in. Death, burial, and resurrection. The old is gone. The new has come. That there is a transformation. It's this natural move that paints to us the reality of another realm. That something actually happened when you received Christ. Because it did. And that's how God, that's what God wants for you and for your family. If you're here this morning and your family, you, 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 you've been struggling and, and you've been facing warfare and turmoil, I'm here to tell you that God brought you here to open your eyes. That you have, because of Christ, the authority to stand in agreement with God's word over the situation. To stand in agreement with God's word over this nation. Let's stand right now. Right now, let's stand. Let's stand in agreement right now over this nation. We're here in church to be the church. And so we stand right now in agreement over this nation. Father, you said if two agree as touching anything, it would be done as we ask. It would be done by our Father in heaven. Father, we thank you right now for your plan for this nation. That we will go your way and not any other way. Father, we thank you for your plan. A plan that's higher than man's plan. Father, we thank you for your plan and for wisdom to be to flow into this earth that the right spirit would be heard uh, in the White House, that the right spirit would be heard at every level of the government. The, white, the right spirit would be heard in the church. The right spirit would be heard uh, in the world. Father, thank you right now for eyes uh, of our understanding being open. But Father, for the world, we lift up their eyes. For every loved one that doesn't know Christ, right now we stand in agreement. Somebody, we stand in agreement that their eyes would be open and they would come to know you as Lord and Savior. Father, we ask. 
ministering spirits, thank you that you go at the word. Compel them to come. Father, bring us the wisdom and the strategies that you have in heaven to reach the lost. Those here today, Father, thank you. If they don't know you, that they would hear and respond. And make you, Lord, today surrender their heart. Over marriages, right now, we declare love and forgiveness and healing and restoration from our God. The healer, the restorer, years. You said you would restore years. I ask for years restored today. Years restored with our children. I ask for years restored in families and in relationships. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We ask for our loved ones to come to know you. And Father, I ask right now, and I take authority over depression in the name of Jesus. If you've been battling, I want you to take, take your hands and just touch your mind right now. Touch your In the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of oppression and depression to take your hands off and to release them now in Jesus' name. And we declare a spirit of light and joy and peace to reign in not only that heart, but in that mind. And we plead the blood of Jesus. Just declare that right now over your mind. Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus over minds. In Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you even for uh, bitterness that's been in hearts. There's been just uh, your, your, I, I say thank you for it because you're, you're, you're opening our heart to see the, the root of frustration and anger. Father, I thank you there would be a supernatural work right now that would go in and remove because we're opening our heart and we say, God, I don't want that anymore. I make the choice, but I need your help. Father, I thank you by your spirit. You're reaching down in and you're releasing, you're releasing every last trace. Oh, Father, restoration. And a heart that beats and feels again and connects the way it was created to. Filled with your love. Oh, thank you, Father. We stand here today. We just say, open our eyes. Open our eyes. In Jesus' name. We love you. We love you. We love you. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, and you've never made him the Lord and Savior of your life, it would be a great opportunity right now to give your heart to Jesus. With every head up and every eye open, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, today you want to tell the world that Jesus, you're making that decision for Jesus today. Lift your hand. Maybe there'll be a hand today. Thank you, Lord. I don't see any. As the leader of your families, As members of your families, moms and dads, aunts and uncles, young people. If you're making a decision for Christ today to lead and to follow and to take a stand as he's commissioned to you, the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, the Commander, and to be aware of another realm and to use your words of authority you want to take that place, this is not just a everybody hand up, but you can say, I'm going to take my place of authority, and I'm going to take my place of prayer. Because God's opened my eyes, and you might just now be seeing it, but you're making a statement of faith, that that's what I'm going to do. I want you to lift your hand. 
But Father, in the name of Jesus, every family, every father, every mother, every person here that you've placed, I thank you for your grace and, and just uh, even now more, the eyes of their understanding being enlightened and that they would know clearly the hope and the picture to which they've been called. Father, I thank you for the right application today, the right application in the homes, the right application in the school, the right application on the football field, the right application in every place that you've set your church all over this city. I thank you for the right application in the name of Jesus and and words and, and, and understanding and bringing about your plan. And we just say this, your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth, just as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, we're going to baptize some people. I know it's a little past time, but praise God, it was right on time, and I have no apologies. Pastor Evan, you're going to come, and uh, I'm going to get into my socks. All right, so if you are getting baptized today, you can come over here to this side section. I believe we have several. And then um, also, if you made a decision for Christ today, or you're just saying, man, with today's message and what was preached and just being prompted, I love that part at the end that he said, just having us say, man, I'm choosing to live for God. I'm choosing to let my voice be for him. So if you, even if you didn't sign up and you want to just come be baptized today to just solidify that decision, we'd love to have you do that. And you can come over here to the side. We have, I believe like extra shirts and stuff. Where's Kylie? Yes, we do. Extra shirts and stuff. So you don't have to leave totally wet, but okay. You ready? All right. Okay, we have Ray Lynn Zollicoffer. You can keep it. They'll take it for you over there, sweetie. I love seeing kids make a decision at a young age. It's the best to serve Jesus. say his whole name.
Okay, we have Hunter. Okay, we have Lathan. Go ahead, buddy. two boys and her she they're siblings so I think it's so cool to see them all baptized in one day church body it's amazing well we love you guys so much don't forget um first wednesday we have coming up this wednesday with food worship all the kids in here kind of a back to school service we'll be praying for everyone and then also night of prayer tuesday night so plan to come to those have a great sunday we love y'all